So this weekend is Nell's birthday from Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. Nell and Scott, if you're watching, happy birthday, Nell. I hope you had a great time at your hotel spa, uh, according to your last video. So my video is going to post on Saturday early afternoon, and I'm assuming with the time difference, you are fast asleep in the middle of the night, unless that is you're still partying. So if you're watching, I hope you had a very happy birthday and a great birthday weekend. Happy birthday. Hey, Booktube, it's Kim at Middle of the Book March. What's today? February 20th. I know the year, it's 2021. So I had a pretty good reading week last week, and I'm really excited about something that I'll tell you about a little further on. But let me get going. What did I finish last week? I officially finished two books. Um, however, one of them is a BookTube prize fiction, and it's this one. I'm not going to say anything more. And I finished um, Negro Land by Margot Jefferson. This was such a fascinating book because this is her memoir that discusses her upbringing in an uh, upper upper class, wealthy Chicago family. Um, her father was a pediatrician and her mother was a socialite and a philanthropist. Um, it's, it's such a contrast to a lot of other books written by Black authors that I've read, and it details a side of Black history that there's not a lot of literature on. So it was so interesting. She talks about her childhood and how she and her sister were sent to private schools they associated most often with white children because they there were very few black children in their circle. Um, she talks about the associates her parents knew, their social circles, um, where they lived, the, the upper middle class or upper class neighborhoods that they lived in. And it's so, there's so much contrast with her status coming from wealthy parents compared to other black families who they actually um, were kind of judgy about. And even in a black community, there are certain levels. She talks a lot about skin color and degrees of skin color and how that affects a black young girl, what that does to her status. And she and her sister had different color skin. So her sister was lighter than she was and she discusses that. She talks about the things that she liked in her childhood and pop culture, the things that she liked to watch and the, the things she liked to read, even as she got into, um, you know, middle school and high school years. And much of that was based on white pop culture. And quite honestly, she grew up in the 50s and 60s and there, there wasn't a lot of exposure for black artists and creators and leaders, that type of thing. So much of what she consumed as a young person was based on white artistry and creativity, TV, music, um, literature, all of it. And she discusses that at length. She talks a great deal about racism within the black community and racism from the white community directed towards her and her family. And no matter what her parents' status was and her the status of her father, who is a, a doctor, they still experience the same type of racism as all black people do. And it didn't have anything to do with them being uh, elevated to the white community. To whites, they were still black. And it's, it's just a, a fascinating portrayal of what she and her family experienced. And as she got um, to college, it was really interesting because her attitude started to change. She was, she became aware that she was unaware of much of black culture um, based on uh, what her black friends were listening to and watching and consuming. She was kind of um, taunted because of it. And then she looked back at her childhood and the way she was raised and she realized that she felt cheated by the way her parents brought her and her sister up. Her parents always instilled in her the attitude of, you have to be better. You have to be this type of black person in order to gain respect and status and credibility with the white community. And so she was always pushed and pressured to do better, to be respectful, 
to achieve more to prove something to the white community. And by the time she was college age, she realized what she did, what education she did not get in her childhood. And she she made a statement in the book that her parents and her extended family um, had a reckoning to deal with because they simply did not equip her to go on to be a strong black woman. And it was fascinating. Um, it's a different format because she she kind of um, she travels between first person and third person and second person and she her writing style can be different from chapter chapter to chapter and so that was a little jarring here and there um, but it did it didn't take long to transition between that so this was really good and illuminating and I was really glad I had the chance to read it. Um, what am I currently reading? Because those are the only two books I actually finished, which is fine. It's fine. I've had some weeks where I haven't finished anything. Um, I'm currently reading um, Gloria Naylor's Linden Hills, and this is a follow-up to The Women of Brewster Place. There is a character whose sister lives in a, a wealthy neighborhood called Linden Hills. Now, I wanted to read this specifically to contrast it with Margot Jefferson's memoir, and kind of read the fictional account of a wealthy black family and their experiences. So I'm not too far into this quite yet, but I absolutely love her writing. It's Her writing is beautiful. Um, I will be finishing two books this week. Well, maybe, maybe more than two. I might finish Linden Hills. I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm currently reading Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell with my dream team buddy readers, Hannah, Roz, and Sarah. And I'll be finishing Cranford this week. It Gaskell is such a funny, intelligent Victorian author. And I've really enjoyed this book. I've really enjoyed hearing the input from the other buddy readers. So that will be finished this week. I'm also finishing George Eliot's Scenes of Clerical Life. I am two-thirds of the way through the book. We'll be finishing it at the end of the month, which is the end of this week, mostly. And I'm on the third interlinked section called Janet's Repentance. Um, this was our February choice, my February choice for the George Eliot 2021 read-along. And um, it's George Eliot. I love it. This is her first novel. And it's a string of three short stories or novellas that are linked with the same uh, provincial town in England, in Victorian England, same some of the same characters. And this is a an early glimpse into the genius of George Eliot, Marianne Evans. So now that's the February choice for George Eliot. The March choice is pretty huge. And it's it's a biography of her. There are several out there. And this one, I hope, yeah, and the print is pretty small and it's a hardcover. So we'll see, we'll see how this goes. This is George Eliot, Voice of a Century, a biography by Frederick R. Carl. It's got like 634 pages or 644 actual text. So hopefully there's there are footnotes. Some of them are fairly long. So <laughs> this is my March selection. And uh, coincidentally, March is also March of the Mammoth. So I'm, I've also got a big, thick book I'm reading for that, which is Roots by Alex Haley. So if any of my George Eliot buddy readers are watching, this is our March selection. If you have decided to be ambitious and pick this up, let me know. I'll be putting a message on Voxer anyway, um, and we'll come up with a reading schedule. So let's see, 644 pages, so 322, uh, so loosely 106. 60, 161 pages a week. Um, mm, <laughs> what is that divided by seven? Uh, somebody figure that out for me. I don't have my math cap on right now. So this is my George Eliot selection for March. Let me know if you are interested in reading along with that. I am also currently reading another book um, electronically for the BookTube Prize in Fiction can't tell you what that is or you know what I don't want to tell you what it is because I'm going to give you all of my thoughts on my octofinal fiction books when the octofinals are over which is February March very beginning of April 
is when the first octofinal round of the Book Two Prize is over. So you will hear my thoughts on the six novels that I read then. And I think that's it for last week. Okay, I am so excited about something, and it's so geeky and nerdy to be excited about, but I'm going to talk to you about it. Um, last week, I watched a video from Hey It's Shay on her channel, and I'm linking her channel and this video below. She put out a video about things that she wished she knew before she signed up for NetGalley. Now, if you don't know, NetGalley is a an online service where you can request books um, pre-release, and it's it's electronic. And so you can sign up for NetGalley, create a profile, and then go and look at their catalog of um, books that are coming up soon and request to receive early copies. The, the catch is, not really a catch, but the publishers want you to read the book and, and put a review online, preferably before the book comes out. So I watched her video, and I had heard of NetGalley before, but I hadn't really done anything with it. I wasn't too interested. However, I watched her video, and I've actually been downloading quite a bit more books to my Kindle, so I have a lot of electronic reading. And I watched her video, and she offered so many tips and tricks to sign up for NetGalley. And I, I felt like doing it. So I signed up for NetGalley. I was pretty specific and detailed in my setting up my profile. And then I went on the catalog and I looked at all of the upcoming new releases. And for this time, I looked at only fiction. So I signed up for five or six books that I was interested in reading. And I'm not going crazy and signing up for just anything. These were books that looked really interesting to me or books that I had already had on my radar. And literally the day after I signed up, I got three books from the publishers. And I feel like I'm part of a really distinguished club. I feel special. And I can't believe I'm so excited about this. And it's like, did I get approved that fast because I'm awesome? Or is, did they approve everybody? I don't know. So... <laughs> When you set up your profile, and Shay offered this this advice on her channel, be specific in your profile. Tell them if you have a platform, if you're on BookTube, if you have a blog, if you are a book reviewer, if you have an online platform, tell them how many subscribers you have, how fast your growth is. And so I did that. I took all that advice. Maybe that's what did it. I don't know, but I feel so special and I'm so excited that I received three books immediately. So I'm going to quickly tell you what those are. The first one is a novel called The Hunter and the Old Woman by Pamela Korgamagi or Korgamagi or Korgamagi. I literally could not find any pronunciation online of her name. Um, the Hunter and the Old Woman is her debut novel. It comes out on August 3rd of this year. She's a Canadian author. She's brand new, so I don't know how much of a profile she has online. Um, the book is coming out from a, a Nancy Press, which is a Canadian press that honors Native nations in Canada. They also have a bookstore. Um, they, I think they are a fairly well-known Canadian press at this point. I know that they've published authors like Margaret Atwood and Michael Ondaatje, so they're not unfamiliar. So this is a book, it's an intertwined story of a cougar and a man that portrays the strength, vulnerability, and consciousness of two top predators. The old woman lives in the wild searching for food, raising her cubs, and avoiding the two-legged creatures who come into her territory. Um, the cougar is described as the old woman. But she is more than an animal. She is a mythic creature who haunts the lives and the dreams of men. Joseph Brandt has been captivated by the mountain lion's legend since childhood. And one day he steps into the forest to seek her out. Um, a classic in the making, the hunter and the old woman is a mesmerizing portrait of two animals united by a shared destiny. And it looked so good. And it's interesting because NetGalley asks you, what attracted you to this book? Is And cover is one of the choices. And this one has an awesome cover. So I'll have pictures here so you can check them out and see what they look like. The second one is Waiting for the Waters to Rise by Maurice Conde. And she is the author of Segu. She's, um, this book comes out on August 3rd of this year. Uh, Maurice Conde is a Guadalupian and a French author. Uh, she's a retired professor, and this book is translated from the French by 
um, her translator, and her husband, Richard Philcox. She's also the author of I, Tichiba, which has been on my TBR forever, and I'm, I need to get my hands on that book. The description of this book is, Babakar is a doctor living alone with only the memories of his childhood in Mali. In his dreams, he receives visits from his blue-eyed mother and his ex-lover, Azelia, both now gone, as are the hopes and aspirations he's carried with him since his arrival in Guadalupe. Until one day, the child Aeneas comes into his life, forcing him to abandon his solitude. Aeneas's Haitian mother died on, in childbirth, leaving her daughter destitute. Now Babacar is all she has, and he wants to offer this little girl a future. Together they fly to Haiti, a beautiful, mysterious island plagued by violence, government corruption, and rebellion. Once there, Babacar and his two friends, the Haitian Mofar and the Palestinian Fouad, three different identities looking for more compassionate world, begin a desperate search for Aeneas's family. They both sound so good. Now, not so coincidentally, the third one is something, it's a book I'm so excited about. And this was, I listed this in my um, Black History Month booktube tag at the beginning of this week. And this is How Beautiful We Were by Mbolo Mabue. And I am so excited to receive this book. This is released on March 9th of this year. Um, Mabue is, an, is a native um, Limbe and Cameroon author. She's been living in New York City for the past 10 years. And she is the author of Behold the Dreamers. And I picked that up in Goodwill last weekend for like, oh, I don't know, three or four dollars. So excited. Um, let's see. We should have known the end was near. So begins Mbolo Mabue's powerful second novel, How Beautiful We Were. And check out the picture of this cover. Set in the fictional African village of Kasawa, it tells of a people living in fear amidst environmental degradation wrought by an American oil company. Pipeline spills have rendered farmlands infertile. Children are dying from drinking toxic water. Promises of cleanup and financial reparations to the villagers are made and ignored. The country's government, led by a brazen dictator, exists to serve its own interests. Left with few choices, the people of Kasawa decide to fight back. Their struggle will last for decades and come at a steep price. I was so excited to get that book, and I am so excited to, to imagine that I was approved by NetGalley because I'm special. <laughs> I, I cracked myself up. <laughs> that could be indiscriminately approving thousands of people, <laughs> Here I am in my little New England town, all excited to be approved by Nick Galley. So the pressure is on to read these books before release so I can review them. And we'll see if I can do it. We'll see if I can do it. So that was my reading week last week. I hope yours was just as good and fun and exciting. Um, hopefully next weekend I'll have a lot of books that I've finished by then. And uh, March begins. So... Let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books, how you feel, if you're excited by any, or what your reading week has been like. Uh, let me know about anything if you want to talk about. Hope you're having a good week, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.